This is a short video to introduce how to use SPSS to compute statistics that are needed for the uh, completion of the assignments in this course. So to get started you would go to your topic, you'd scroll down to assignments and quizzes, and then you would select the data set. In this case we're going to see the, that this is a SPSS file here because it has a dot .sav suffix and you can open or save it. I suggest that you save it to your file since it's already on my computer I'm just going to go ahead and open it. But you can save that somewhere in your computer to the C drive and you'll always have it for um, several different assignments. Now when if SPSS is appropriately installed on your computer the data set should open. You will notice that there are two views in SPSS. This is the variable view and data view. In variable view, you have all the different variables that are entered uh, into the file. We have a short name here, uh, the type, and since we're only going to be using um, numeric numbers, we're not going to be doing qualitative, we're going to be doing quantitative statistics. Uh, all of our variables will be numeric. Width just means uh, how many integers that we need to report the particular variable. For example, with grade, we only have um, four different grades. Decimals, we don't really need any because you're not going to be in grade 1.2. You'd be in the first grade. Uh, label is gives you a little more information about the abbreviated name over here. For example, we have date of the first measurement. Uh, weight here would be weight in pounds. This helps you understand that uh, the, the type of measurement that we're using because you could weigh kilograms or if it's a newborn baby you could do ounces. But um, So this gives you a little more detail about the particular variable. Now this is an important column, the values column. If we have nominal or ordinal level data we have to tell SPSS what it means. For example, grade. We can't simply type in kindergarten for children who are in kindergarten, we have to tell SPSS that one is coded for kindergarten, two for first grade, three and four, etc. So any type of nominal or ordinal level data, we have to code for it. Remember the code book that we showed you in the PowerPoint. This is uh, where that is very important. Here's a ranked BMI uh, methodology there for coding for that ordinal level data. Gender. We have to tell SPSS what male and female means in this data set. And these are arbitrary numbers. You could pick zero for male and one for female. Doesn't matter. Just make sure it matches the code book. Same for race. Now if we have scale data, which is interval ratio level, we don't really have to tell SPSS anything. We simply enter the number. So this view is used when entering data. Later on you'll get a chance to build your own SPSS file and you will enter the data or the variables here. Once we've entered all of our variables and we've told SPSS how we want it handled, how we want it uh, treated over here under the measurement scale, then we can actually go in and start entering the data on all of our subjects. And if you scroll down to the bottom you will see that in this particular data file we have uh, 319 subjects because it took quite a while to enter the data. Um, and you can see age and height and uh, again if you're, you say well is this centimeters, is this inches, you can always, always go back to the variable view and see how we entered the height. In this case it was inches. So for each child, let's say this is subject number one, subject number one was five years old had a height of 46 inches, a weight of 46.4 pounds, 22% body fat, 10.4 uh, pounds fat mass, 36 pounds fat free, and all the way across you can see all the data that we entered for this particular child. So data view, variable view. Now let's say that we wanted to um, learn how to produce some descriptive statistics. I think you're going to enjoy SPSS because as you'll find out uh, in the olden days, and we'll get a little experience of the olden days, we had to calculate everything by hand. 
But now with SPSS, it's just a matter of pointing and clicking. I suggest that you review Appendix A in your book and use those examples to familiarize yourself with some of the abbreviations that are used in SPSS before you actually do your homework assignment. So you've downloaded the data file and you've opened it up and now you're able to get in there and look at the different variables. So we'll show you some of the procedures that uh, you'll go through to conduct some univariate descriptives. Let's say that we want to do a frequency table. We'll go to the data set and we'll click on Analyze and then we'll click on Descriptives and then we will click on Frequencies and we can highlight perhaps something that we're interested in. Let's go back up here to the top, see if we can find one. Here we go, let's do gender. What about the gender in our data set? Um, put that over there. Let's do um, average calf, it's a continuous level. And we'll pick one more Lohmann's rank. That looks like it's ordinal level. So we have a nominal, a continuous, ordinal level data. And now we can select the type of statistics that we want to run. So we can pick mean and median and mode, standard deviation, range. We can see minimum, maximum, skewness, kurtosis and hit continue. Select OK. Now for gender, all we really care about is the mode, number and percent. And uh, we said one was male and two was female. Um, we don't really care about mean and standard deviation because you can't have a mean for a nominal level variable. You can't really average boys and girls together and come up with an average. It's either a certain number of males, a certain number of females. But we can look at uh, the average calf because it was a continuous variable. This has a little more meaning to it. You see the mean was 11.9 uh, millimeters and the median was 9.3, most frequently occurring 7. I'm sorry, the one in the middle. Um, yeah, most frequently occurring seven. Standard deviation, skewness, and so forth. So it gives you the frequency. This is where we're interested in for gender because it is a nominal level. It tells you the number of males, number of females, and percent. And then it'll run a frequency distribution table for you. It's a good place to look for outliers. But we'll go on down and Lohman skin fold rank. Again, we can't do average here because these are categorical. They're ordinal level data. But it tells you how many we have, the number and percent that were considered very low body fat, optimal, overweight, and obese. So that would be good to use when you're reporting ordinal level data. Let's do this one more time. If we're going to do Analyze and Descriptives and Frequencies. So remember if you have nominal or ordinal level you can report number and percent only. When you have the scale level of measurement which is a ratio or interval level you would report the measures of central tendency and variance. Typically it's mean, standard deviation, and range. We'll go back to our data view here. And let's look at some other things that we can do for descriptives. Let's make a bar chart. We use bar charts and pie charts for nominal and ordinal level data only. So we would go to graphs and legacy dialogues. In this case, we'll pick a bar chart. Simple. And we can do gender here. Let's do uh, 
Well, can't find gender. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Put gender in our category. And we could give a title to this if we'd like. Continue. And we click OK. And we see that we get a bar chart. Remember, you can only use bar charts for categorical data. And now we'll do a pie chart. We go to graphs, legacy dialogues, we can select pie. And let's see, let's do the uh, ranked BMI. Let's see what we get. This is how we're going to define our slices. Notice this is ordinal level. If you were to put one of these scales, uh, it would produce something that was very unintelligible. So make sure you pick nominal or ordinal. And again, you can give it a title. And select OK. And now you have a very nice pie chart. Kind of lets you know where the subjects are. Well, what about continuous variables? You can create a histogram. You can go to graphs and legacy dialogues and select a histogram. And what we can select now, we'll pick on uh, fat free body mass up in the variable. And we can give it a title and see just how lean our subjects are in this group of 319 children. Remember continuous data. So we see that it's a little bit skewed to the this side of the curve means we have more children than would be expected in a normal curve that have high levels of uh, body fat over here. Lower levels of the muscle, but they are children. And we can do a line graph. If we go to graphs, legacy dialogues. Select line graph, simple. Tell it what we want. We can do ranked BMI. Click OK and we'll get a line graph for ranked BMI. We can also create a stem and leaf plot, which is a way of uh, retaining the original variables. You don't lose them as you would in these other graphs. A little bit different, you select uh, Analyze and Descriptive Statistics and explore. And let's move age in years into the dependent list. And for plots, well, let's see it's selected already. And we don't want both statistics and plots. Let's just do plots. OK, and you have a stem and leaf. So we have 66 children who are 5 years old and 90 children who are 6 years old. And you could go back actually and select this for boys and girls. Um, you could do Analyze, Descriptives, Explore. And we could select a factor list. Uh, we could do Age by Grade in School. And click OK. And we'll get four different plots which is a little silly here because uh, everybody in the kindergarten is going to be five. Looks like we have 23 six-year-olds and 65 five-year-olds. But it might help us to know if we have some older children in a grade, if we want to look at percent body fat by grade. Uh, if we look at the first grade, we have one extreme under five. That's interesting. Might be uh, entered incorrectly, or perhaps there is a five-year-old in the first grade. 67 of the children, 14 older than 7. So that's a way to, uh, to run a stem and leaf using SPSS.